transforming rural and how we're going to look at different ways of delivering services across the piece. So I suppose I find it quite interesting that private developers are interested in getting involved in this market. Um, and if it's significantly cost, has a significant cost benefit to the council for people to be in that kind of accommodation, it might be a cost effective way. <coughs> was to subsidise those rents then, presumably, uh, is one question. And the other one is that on page 48 in your report, 3.9.7, I, I may have misunderstood what you've written, but it seems to say that there are um, likely to be certain exemptions, including um, people fleeing domestic abuse, um, supporting housing for older people and disabled people. Have I got that wrong? Is that not what you meant? No, no.
family as if you put them far. They expect the independent executives to change what they uh, envision getting them went, or is it that councils should start taking on um, the burden of subsidising these rents going forward? If so, is that sustainable? That the council should subsidise these higher rents? Um, it's, it's a challenge for the council financially.
to look at policies. Um, this report was initiated by a discussion um, that we had as we see with the former coordinating committee, Trevor Hayes, Council Hayes, made the observation that we're all had a problem in relation to excessive alcohol consumption. Um, the question was asked about whether existing policies to help reduce this were sufficiently robust, and if they are, were they being implemented rigorously enough? So we established the task and finish um, to have a look at that. Um, over the period of time that we gathered evidence, we heard from uh, officers from planning, from licensing, police, and public health. Um, and as the objective was to address uh, public health issues around lifestyle, we included fast food outlets as a contributing fast food as a contributing factor to a well-documented negative impact, um, which most seriously affect people living in the most deprived wards. Um, I'd like to thank the officers who contributed to the community information we received, and also Patrick Torpy and Mike Callum's group of sports officers, who as always were excellent in the support of us. And I would just at this point just like to add that Patrick is soon well and restored to health. We miss him. He worked well with us, and we'd like to see him back here doing the job that he, he, he's so good at. Um, in total, we made seven recommendations, um, which were detailed in the report and centered around strengthening the way that public health issues are included in both local and national planning and licensing policies. We did hear of some excellent initiatives that local businesses are being encouraged to sign up to um, on a voluntary basis, such as an agreement to stop selling very high strength um, and most damaging alcohol through the Reduce and Strength campaign, and to address poor diet through the Takeaway for a Change and Let Will um, Eat Will Will campaign, which work for parents and children and um, retailers to encourage healthier diets. Uh, and we'd like to see that work carried on with vigour on a voluntary basis, but with vigour. We'd like to see the work to improve these aspects of public health supported by stronger working relationships um, between the departments and the establishment of a cross-departmental working party which reports to the Health and Wellbeing um, Board and to carry that forward. Uh, we were dismayed that there was no consideration of public health in licensing regulations. And we'd like and although this is a national issue, not a local issue, we would like to see council leadership press for such um, an objective to be included in the city region. And the city region had its influence to that of the local government association and um, the directors of public health um, for greater consideration of public health at national level. Um, we would like to see um, a refreshed licensing policy document for rural which seeks to address the objectives of the rural plan. Um, though by the conclusion of the report, we did understand that cumulus impact policies were only one tool that can be used. We would like to see them used um, where appropriate. In relation to the planning policy, we did conclude that there's scope to go further than has been the case to date. And follow examples of local authorities such as St. Helens and Stoke, who developed supplementary planning documents to make exclusion zones, for example, a uh, fast food outlet around secondary school. Um, I would like to conclude by, apart from thanking Mike and Patrick, um, I'd like to thank Councillor Phil Gilchrist and Paul Hayes and Jeanette Williams, who did most of the work with us before she was elevated to the lofty house of the um, And I don't know whether Jeanette wants to, I mean, I'm happy to take any comments or questions if you can. Um, and Jeanette, if Jeanette wants to make a comment on the body of the report. Mm -hmm. Just a quick comment, thanks, Chair. Yeah. Sorry. Come on. <laughs>
taking them back to our wards and um, you know, championing them. Just briefly, I think it's Eden Well, just the school uh, events, but it's tied in with um, Eden Well. And just basically, pretending to be the best year, coming about getting in. Um, and it, it's a fantastic event that takes place in primary schools, um, you know, where <coughs> alternatives to what they're used to be like pizza are the healthy alternatives. So we whole, whole grain flour, reduced fat cheese. And, yeah. and I stood next to a, a little boy who said, oh, this is much nicer than what you get, Mum. <laughs> <laughs> But it was really good, and all the ingredients were laid out, and how much they were. And um, there was um, a stall there from the local dentist showing children how to use your teeth. You know, it, it was a really fantastic event, and, and there was a competition for healthy menus. So parents devised a healthy menu, and there were three years, and they were healthy campers. So um, everyday foods, so there'd be juice fat cheese, four of them, you know, and it was it was really great. It was so successful, and we are. Thank you. 
transmission services. We understood from what we heard that those services in place needed to be the most appropriate to reduce the pressure on the hospitals and refocus activity on home ba in the home-based setting, but also that as circumstances change, the commissioning ability could respond quickly to developing different services. There is work to be done to promote awareness among professionals who make the decisions about care and treatment, about what the alternatives, what alternatives are available to hospital care, and also from the general public um, about the wide range and the value of community-based services. As is always the case, uh, communications between different organisations and professionals are most crucial to make sure that care and treatment is safe and effective, and the work being done to introduce a single patient record is welcomed. Um, we'd like to see that extended, as I'm sure it will be, and progress on that reported back um, to this committee. Our final recommendation relates to developing a performance management, uh, performance management which actually accurately measures how well the plans are working. Um, during the time we were carrying out this study, we saw some really excellent examples of collaborative working and some imaginative developments in service delivery, which really are making a difference. But we also saw in a very clear way the immense strain that both health and social care is under. And we understand that though there is a need to work differently and to get the best possible use of resources and different ways to support people, I have to say that this service is simply one which is in need of more money for images. And I think we've heard the recognition of that at national level over the last few days where the, the, the discussion has, has been raised a little bit with questions asked in Parliament yesterday. Um, and, and points being made to different authorities again today. So, um, I'm happy to take any questions. I'm sure my colleagues, if you want to make a comment, I'm happy to. Katrina, yeah. Yeah, it was a really informative and uh, fantastic interview, and I was um, really delighted to be on it. Um, it was apparent, though, that um, the problems with readmissions was because there was just not enough support um, available in the communities. And you know, I would hope that that with a better relationship between partners and social care and the social sector and the health sector and the introduction of the community hubs, and whether they're in each constituency, the rapid community support groups, the integrated care coordinating hubs, that we will eventually see an um, improvement um, in readmissions. Um,
lots of guidance coming out in the NHS, and I think there's been about 21 documents in the last two or three months, to my knowledge. And how do we make sense of all that? And as partners, we begin to really address some of the issues that we have. Um, and so we've done a piece of work to try and bring all that into one place so that we're all working to the same goal and the same plan. Now, and you've seen that in the way the papers have been presented this evening about bringing partners together to integrate the commissioning of the CCG and of the local authority. Um, and Graham and I and colleagues are working really hard to bring that about. And we have the same vision that we ought to be doing this together um, and looking at maximising the whole resource that we have on Wirral, not just that within the local authority, not just that within the NHS, but saying how are we getting better value out of the whole of, of that, those budgets. Um, and I have to say, there's an exemplar piece of work that the local authority has done in developing the Wirral 2020 plan and that process. And so, not wishing to uh, look elsewhere, but look on your doorstep for best practice, we've taken that approach, we've engaged with stakeholders, with our practices, with the local medical committee, our dentists, our optometrists, our health watch teams, our voluntary services, and we've developed, in, in effect, a really high level plan, exactly like the 2020 pledges slide you'll see there. Not exactly the same, but we've come up with this plan. It's a triple A plan. We call it a healthy rural plan, and we're all saying when we talk about things we're doing, it's about health people. It's about that single objective. Um, but this plan talks about how we're going to improve health, how we're going to improve care, and how we're going to improve the financial or the uh, effectiveness or the value from money from the services that we get. Because there are major challenges for us. We know on Wirral we have an aging population which is disproportionately older than the rest of the country. We know that the life expectancy between our wards in terms of welfare and health is over 10 years. And we know that life expectancy for men and women is lower than the national average. So by any stretch of the imagination, we've got a real rising demand coming along. And if we have admissions to hospital growing at the rates that we have now, and we've heard a report on this evening, if we do nothing, we've estimated the cost of that be £170 million pounds more than we have in five years' time. And so there really is a need to be asking these three questions. This language of better health, better care, better value is a really helpful language because I think it helps us focus and it's one that's uh, familiar uh, in the social care world as it is to the health world. So it's, it's actually quite a good language that we can find because sometimes we talk um, so if I very quickly run through these, um, the better health circle there with the quadrants, you'll be able to relate to, I hope, immediately by recognising that a lot of those segments relate directly to the Real 2020 plan. And so none of this is in isolation. So whereas the, the uh, 2020 plan talks about the people and the business and the environment, we've adopted this approach to talk about health and care because Within the NHS, and as the leader of the NHS on rural, I need to be looking at cancer and our response to cancer times. We need to look at mental health, we also need to look at long term conditions, and we really need to think about how is health delivered, but not in isolation of the determinants of ill health. And we know the greatest determinants of ill health is unemployment, is housing, is culture, is leisure, and all that fits in with our joined objectives within the Rural 2020 plan. So I hope what you see is a great deal of synergy between the two. There are some differences to focus on in the better care circle, mental health, specifically looking at mental health, because that's a priority for us on Rural. Urgent care, and we've just had a report on admissions, so we're looking at getting the best value out of our urgent care we offer, um, and looking at uh, improving end-of-life care 